Finally tonight, a farewell to a beloved creature of the sea. Keiko, the killer whale, died earlier today in Norway. And he spent 22 years in captivity with people, and that characterized the rest of his life. Everyone remembers that intense emotional scene when Willie the Orca made his final jump to freedom in the 1993 movie Free Willie. However, the applause and excitement soon turned to horror when fans worldwide discovered how the real Willie, aka Keiko the Killer Whale, was living in captivity. Keiko lived in a tank so shallow, his tail almost reached the bottom. Keiko's plight touched the hearts of millions who soon unleashed an outcry bombarding his captors for release. Keiko's story is endearing. Although it may have ended with his freedom, Keiko would never enjoy it as a free killer whale should have. This is the tragic story of Keiko, the super orc that we all know is Willie. Keiko was captured when he was just a toddler. He was born in the wild off the coast of Iceland around September 24, 1976. Unfortunately, in 1979, he ended up in a theme park in Iceland when he was only three years old. A whaler named Joe Gunnison, the leader of the whaling company, attacked Keiko's entire family. The so-called theme park he was kept in, which is a tiny aquarium near a small town in Iceland with a population of just over a thousand people. At that time, he was given the name Seki and was later known as Keiko. His journey into captivity had begun and for years, Keiko performed in shows, doing tricks and entertaining audiences. But he was far from home and many people began to question whether keeping a creature in captivity was the right thing to do. Later in 1982, Keiko was sold and moved to Marineland in Ontario, Canada. It was here that he started performing for larger audiences, but it was also where signs of his poor health began to emerge. He developed skin lesions, likely due to the stress of captivity, and had a tough time fitting in with the older female orcas in the facility. This was due to not being part of their pod from the beginning, he was very scared and kept to himself, causing constant attacks by the other orcas. Marineland couldn't fix the situation, so in 1985 he was sold to Reno Aventura in Mexico City, Mexico. It was at this point that he received the name Keiko, the lucky one. At the time he was only 10 feet long, he was housed in a tank intended for bottlenose dolphins, but he wasn't a baby anymore and just kept growing. His living conditions were far from ideal. He grew to 21 feet in length and the tank barely held him. He was only 65 feet wide and 22 feet deep. And Keiko could barely move, let alone swim around. And to make matters worse, he was sharing the tank with some dolphins, but at least he had company. The bigger problem than the size of the tank and his friends was the chlorine in the tank and the fact that it was always 80 degrees. Much warmer water than orcas should live in and large amounts of chlorine meant they were saving money on refilling the tanks by just dumping chemicals in them. They would also put salt in the water instead of bringing natural seawater, which even worsened his skin condition. But that didn't stop the Reno Aventura owners from forcing Keiko to perform up to five times a day. He was basically just a money printer for them and a marketing stunt. He was exhausted and in poor health, but his mind was so broken that he never tried to be aggressive. Keiko was a gentle soul, and these conditions slowly exhausted him both physically and mentally. Captive killer whales tend to be aggressive and either rebel or simply fight with each other. But Keiko was silent and never rewarded for his outstanding behavior. He obeyed commands, acted cooperatively, and got along with his dolphin friends, and even started to learn how to communicate with them. His caretaker's baby once fell into Keiko's tank, and this is when he showed his amazing personality. Most of the orcas would play with the child aggressively or simply chomp on it, but Keiko helped the baby up and put him on the surface even before anyone noticed the baby was missing. This incident made worldwide news and Keiko's life was forever changed in 1993 when he became the star of the film Free Willy. This movie captured the hearts of many and highlighted the bond between a young boy named Jesse and the orca known as Willy. Jesse is trying to save Willy from an amusement park that just wants to dump him. The incident with the baby in Reno Aventura also became a scene in the movie. The movie was an international hit and smashed the box office. The success drew attention to Keiko's real situation and raised questions about the ethics of keeping an orca in captivity. And the public put a lot of pressure 
with over 300,000 people demanding the immediate release of Keiko. 300,000 phone calls. People called from all over the world wanting to get involved with efforts to save the world's whales. His living conditions and health problems were highlighted because of the movie. He was far from the joyful orca from the movie. Keiko was severely overweight. His skin lesions had gotten way worse and spread all over his body. He had developed even more skin warts and stomach ulcers. The damage to his immune system caused him to become severely underweight, slow and unable to perform. The projected cause for his freedom was insanely high, and the park got only $75,000 for his role in the movie and refused to use the money for Keiko. This all led to a collaborative effort between Warner Brothers and the International Marine Mammal Project. In February 1995, the Free Willy Keiko Foundation was established. Donations from the foundation, two generous benefactors, Greg and Wendy McCall, along with contributions from millions of school children, raised over $7 million. The McCalls themselves donated $2 million. This funding was crucial for Keiko's rehabilitation and potential return to the wild. On January 8, 1996, Keiko's life took a major step towards freedom. He was flown from Mexico to the Oregon Coast Aquarium in Newport, Oregon. There he was placed in a new concrete enclosure containing seawater. This was the first time Keiko was living in bearable conditions. He stayed there to recuperate for eight months and his weight increased significantly during this time, reaching 9,620 pounds by June of 1997. The plan to return Keiko to the wild sparked both hope and controversy. Some believe that the years in captivity made the idea of releasing him unrealistic and that he would never adapt to the wild. However, preparations to reintroduce him began on September 9, 1998. Keiko was flown to Kletsvik, a bay on the island of Heime in Iceland, in a specialized container filled with salt water and cooled with ice cubes. Under the care of the Free Willy Keiko Foundation, and with assistance from the Ocean Future Society, Keiko began the training to prepare for his life in the open ocean. He had to become way stronger as he never swam long distances and supervised swims in the open ocean were a part of his preparation. He had a whole facility dedicated to his training and released into the open waters. After 17 years of slavery, the killer whale was finally close to its homeland. The moment everyone had been waiting for finally arrived in the summer of 2002. Keiko was released into the open ocean off the coast of Iceland. It was a historic event as he became the first captain orca to be returned to the wild. He initially began swimming freely in the Icelandic waters and was spotted in the bay for days. However, Keiko's transition to a complete wildlife was not without its challenges. He continued to receive support from his caretakers, including food supplements, as he adjusted to hunting for his own meals. He also had a satellite transmitter attached to monitor his progress and location. In the following years, he was closely monitored and led on walks where he would interact with other orcas and slowly but surely, he began to become a part of the pod and swim with other orcas for longer periods of time. But Keiko still stayed close to the bay and its people. Sadly, Keiko was alone and looked for company with the people because he kept the love towards them. This is why he would often approach both children and adults and allow them to pet him. Although he occasionally approached groups of wild orcas, he remained on the periphery and did not integrate with them. Because he often sought out the company of humans instead of his own kind, people start raising concerns about his ability to adapt to life in the wild. As Keiko kept refusing to leave the bay and kept interacting with people, the authorities banned all interactions with him except for his caretakers. On December 12, 2003, Keiko was swimming in Taknes Bay in Norway, where he succumbed to pneumonia at the age of 27 and died alone. His passing marked the conclusion of a complex journey that aimed to give him a second chance at life in the wild, but it was too late, as all 17 years in captivity, he was no longer a wild animal. The project to free Keiko was met with mixed results and opinions. While some considered it a success, others believed it fell short of its goals. Keiko's hard time to fully adapt to life in the wild raised questions about the challenges of reintroducing captive animals to their natural habitats. Some think that a better alternative to freeing animals that were held captive for a long time is making some sort of sanctuary where their quality of life would improve, but that these animals could never adapt to living in the wild. Was Keiko's story an entirely successful one? We have our thoughts reserved, but maybe another orca's tale could yield an answer, shown on screen.